Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Jordan. I'm a yoga instructor and massage therapist. And today we are here to talk about the harsh reality of living off of a yoga teacher's pay. Um, I wouldn't recommend this to literally anyone. And that's basically what this video is about is just a fair warning. I had had so many fair warnings coming up to this, but I think it's interesting that I somehow ended up having to only live off of a yoga teacher's what happened in my mouth there? Living off a yoga teacher's salary, guys, I'm so sorry. I, I had to wake up at 6.30 this morning. I am feeling a little bit delusional at this point. I swear I'm fine. So long story short, when I finished massage therapy school and I had passed my MBLEX, I was honestly so drained from the year. I also was a yoga teacher getting into massage therapy, but I was also working as a waitress. Because again, you can't just live off a yoga teacher salary. So I was serving at the time, but after like doing yoga and getting more into massage therapy and like doing very chill, very mellow um, occupations and then having to walk into a restaurant on a Friday night with a 30 minute wait, it, it was making me crack. <laughs> um, I was already anxious transitioning into a new career. It was just really bad. My anxiety was just really, really high. So I had to quit my serving job. I didn't have to, but I chose to. And here's the thing. I was lucky enough to have parents who love me and support me and know the importance of mental health and how I struggle with my mental health. And they basically had to help me these past three months. And I'm about to be very transparent in this video with how much I make and how much I borrowed from my parents because you guys really need to see like how much debt you could go into. So we're gonna imagine my parents in this video are a credit card company. If you don't have that support, I hope you do. And I know some people, not everyone has someone like a spouse or their family who can support them while they just teach yoga. So I ended up doing this for three months. I finally received my license at the beginning of January. So for November, December, and about halfway through January, so two and a half, three months, I was only making yoga teacher's salary. So here, take note, seriously. I wrote down all my numbers and stuff in here so that I can share them with you guys today. I'm gonna kind of explain to you guys how how I get paid. So right now I teach yoga at two different locations. At one of them, I'm an independent contractor and at another one, I'm an employee. Both have their own benefits in like a really cool way, but at the same time, they both have their negative sides. Also, you're really not making that much money to begin with anyways. <laughs> so starting, I, when I first started teaching yoga, I started teaching yoga as an independent contractor. You get flat out pay, straight up what it is, so I was making $25 an hour and I don't get taxed because as an independent contractor, you don't get taxed by wherever you, you provide your services, basically. You have to file them at the end of the year, which is already awful. But the pay is good over the year, but if you're only working as an independent contractor, at the end of the year, you're probably gonna end up owing money because the whole year you weren't paying taxes. What I was making, like this isn't all cut and dry. There's a lot of expenses here. There's also a lot of gas and travel time because I work at four separate locations between two companies. I'm all over the freaking county, basically. So gas is really important. Travel time is, oh, I'm falling off my chair, is essential to this. My bills, and this is not even including living, like my just bills, roughly around $950, like total. At the studio I teach at, I teach 20 classes a month, which is five classes a week. So roughly, I'm making, that's like roughly around $500, which obviously, you know, $500, like literally that pays for the walls, does it pay for the food in my fridge or the gas in my car? But I was, while I was in school, I eventually was like, yo, I wanna teach more yoga classes. Like that would be really cool. So I ended up applying to a gym and I got the job. It's a um, chain, so therefore with this at the gym, I'm an employee, which creates a whole lot of different elements. I get paid almost $10 less, but they also take my taxes out. So if I'm an employee somewhere, and although I'm making less throughout the year, A, it's easier to budget, 
B, you're going to get money back during tax season. You're not going to have to owe anything. So at the gym, I teach 22 classes a month. I make $17 um, an hour at the gym. Mind you, this is the 20 classes I, I teach as an independent contractor and the 22 I teach um, as an employee. Like this is, these are my scheduled classes. When I was just a yoga instructor for three months, I was subbing my butt off. Any opportunity I had to sub, and if I wasn't already teaching, I was taking it. So I wasn't just teaching like 12, 13 classes a week. I was subbing. So it kind of built up to like 15 or sometimes 16. And I was constantly, constantly trying to make money because I felt bad, obviously low key mooching off my parents because your girl couldn't control her mental health. But like I said, it's important. You gotta take care of yourself. Thanks mom and dad again. So roughly from the gym, I was making a month, probably like $400. I was making around $950 a month as a yoga teacher. Like long story short. My variable expenses add up to probably around $300 a month, $400 a month. Yeah, up upwards near $900 to $1,200 I borrowed from my parents over a course of three months. And again, I'm so grateful for that. Like I'm getting like teary eyed just thinking about it, but that's $1,200 in debt in like technically in three months. So imagine being $1,200 in debt. And this was actually, I wrote this down in my notebook and I'm gonna actually put this away cause I'm done with it. Your, your income isn't just money, right? Your income is, is your time. It's your energy. It's, it's fulfillment. And if you're not getting all those things, like that just puts you like in emotional debt that puts you in spiritual debt. And on top of the horrible financial debt, it's just, I, I, I get so worked up talking about this because it really was an eye-opening thing, especially living in my first apartment for my first time and having this all happen while living in my first apartment. It's just something to consider. But because we are considering these things, it, it, it leads you to ponder and it, it makes space. And as a massage therapist, I love what I do. And I'm not telling you like, if you're a yoga instructor, become a massage therapist, but I have always been this way, a jack of all trades, but a master to none, but find something else that you really enjoy. And it can be in a trade. Trades are popping off right now, especially holistic health, especially mindfulness. And I don't, and I love it. I love what I do. I've been enjoying the field thus far in case anyone was wondering I started working at a spa as well as massaging at the gym I work at and I love what I do it's I love I'm so grateful to be able to be in a space now where not only I can pay my freaking bills but where I also get financial income and I get fulfillment I get spiritual income and I, I, I don't ever feel drained so I get emotional income like it just makes me happier instead of feeling anxious or sad it's just all a lot to consider. <laughs> and I think while you're considering all those things, see what else you like I or, or research it. Like I didn't know right away I wanted to be a massage therapist. If you guys saw my, my experience in massage therapy school video, you'll see that I've never had a professional massage. I still haven't had a professional massage. I was just brainstorming, you know, five year, three year plans and what sort of what what I wanted to do next? I was a yoga instructor, but like what 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 else? There was there were things to consider, <laughs> and I just I just thought of it. My, like you know, I asked people like, what do you see me as? You know, like based off of my personality and my things I like, like what do you see me doing? Like my mom always told me that she saw me as a massage therapist or something like that. I knew an acupuncturist, and I like tossed that around for a moment. Like there's, there's so many things. And of course, if you guys want to start a discussion and drop down your um, occupations and what you do, you should definitely do that. So we can inspire everyone together. So, cause I, cause it is not possible to live off a yoga teacher's salary unless you are a studio owner or you are an Insta baddie yoga teacher and you, and you do the retreats and, and 
and you get sponsorships. Like, it's just not, it's not applicable for your everyday yogi, um, like me and you. And yeah, I think, I think that's all I wanted to, to talk about here. I believe in you. If you ever want to message me or comment below or, you know, follow me on Instagram. And if you ever need inspiration or you want to talk about anything regarding moving forward in your career because dude i'm 23 like i just it, it's only like my third day out here bro yeah it's only my third day out here i don't know like hey it's hard and it's scary and i can't believe i'm here like, i can't believe i i i considered all these things in the past two years have and have flown by and this is where i'm at and i'm really happy make sure you like this video or share it with a friend or subscribe I love friends. It's always nice for me to be able to check my phone while I'm running around working all of these jobs and doing all of these things just to see like, I don't know, hear about you guys and your lives taking me out of my own head for a sec. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. Have a great rest of your week and peace out.